You're checking out Willie D Live. Watch Prophets are a group of musicians and poets that originated in Watts, California. Like their contemporaries, the last poets, the group combined elements of jazz music and spoken word performances, making the trio one that is often seen as a forerunner of contemporary hip hop music. Formed in 1967, the group comprised of Richard Dito, Father Amdi Hamilton, and Otis O'Sullivan. Oh, Solomon. Look here, man. This was in the wake of the Watts rise, to put this in proper context. Now, y'all know that America was in a very volatile state around that time. This is the turbulent 60s. This is a bunch of disrespect going on, racial tensions as high as they ever were, people put sicking dogs on human beings, blowing up churches assassinating our leaders and out of the ashes come one of the most prolific uh, poetry uh, groups that has ever been assembled in the history of mankind and I am not exaggerating y'all think I'm playing y'all go look it up get, get, go google right now well don't look it up right now because you won't want to finish watching, uh, checking out the show but in your spare time check it out Look up the Watts Prophets, and you'll see what I'm talking about. These guys, they paved the way. If not for them, there is no hip-hop, and we're going to explain in a minute. In the building right now, y'all, a huge salute to one of the originators, one of the pioneers, the trailblazers, my man, one of the most honest dudes in profound guys I have ever met in my life. Father Amdi Hamilton. Welcome to Willie D's Man, Live. thank you so much for having me because I always admired your work so much. Thank Just you, man. Just like you admire, I like the Watts Prophets, but I've always really loved your work. And being born in Houston, Texas, that yeah. really made me proud of you guys. Right. So, and the way you took hip-hop. Right. And rap. Now, ex explain that, man, because, you know, we were talking the other day at, like, my surrogate father's house, John Smith. <laughs> mm -hmm, my brother. And, yeah, your brother. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your, your real brother. Um, and we were talking at his house, and you were explaining the origins, the true origins of hip-hop, because many people believe that hip-hop started, you know, with rappers, actually, you know, actual rappers mm -hmm. explain that to me you know explain what you were telling well the me word to the rap people. means to talk and it was a colloquial word used by african americans all over america right. let me go rap to this sister uh i gotta i gotta rap to this guy i'll be right back everybody used that word but the poets took it and put it into an art form in okay. particular the last poets and the watts prophets mm -hmm. we made the first album called Rap. It was called Rapping Black in a White World by the Watts Prophets. That's where the music industry got the name for the genre, which became a new genre. There was no such a thing as rap. Okay. And so, you know, you had R&B, jazz, etc. But then you had rap music. So from our first album, Rapping Black in a White World, that's where the music industry got that name, rap music. And, and your, what was your earliest recollection of somebody actually using that word, um, like in mainstream? The Watts Prophets. We were the first ones to use it. I mean, besides, and the last be, poets. You know, yeah, okay, so, so you guys used it first, and then, they, then the last poets used it, and then it basically just took off into a whole different genre. That's uh, right, but it was an ancient genre because this really right. started in Africa amongst the Jellies and the Griots. That's what they did. The Europeans had their poetry on paper, mm -hmm. and they would read it. But in Africa, it was all from memory. And so the Watts Prophets, who were after the riots, looking for an area of expression, because we were all balled up in Watts and Harlem, et cetera. We had no way to express ourselves. So the poets began to come out rapping, and it opened up an area of expression for us. Mm -hmm. 
So so when it started getting when when the term rap started like making its way through uh, mainstream, what was your what was your reaction? Knowing that, hey, you know, hey, this is something that we actually started and now other people are taking off with it and profiting from it. Well, we was kind of shocked, you know, when we won our first talent show, uh, reading poetry off a of paper, and they had bands, singers, etc. And we were surprised how the people took to us doing poetry. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, reading it off a of paper, we didn't get off a of paper till we started working in clubs. We would like some of the first cats to take poetry into clubs. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the uh, John Daniels at a club called Maverick's Flat in Los Angeles, which was like the Apollo West, he told us, man, y'all can't be up here reading this stuff. He said, you got to memorize it. Mm -hmm. And that was, we began to memorize our poetry. And began, we took it from the page to the stage. We began to put different dynamics to it. To begin to put music to it, but that really wasn't nothing new, because Louis Jordan and a lot of ca old cat jazz cats had been rapping on their records anyway. Mm -hmm. They had been, you know, using just just uh, language rather than singing it. So it really wasn't nothing new, but it was quite a surprise to see how people uh, begin to respond to it, and uh, it, it was a surprise to us. Is all I can say. I mean, but at, at some point, you know, it, it, it has to go from being a surprise to being like a, a, a little disrespectful when people ain't really paying homage. You know, like that's one of the big things that, that, that I, I appreciate about people when they pay homage. Uh, I always pay homage. Uh, it don't take anything away from me. I think th some people believe that when you pay homage, you take away from something. But... It doesn't take anything away from me to pay homage. My thing is that, you know, most people are familiar with uh, The Last Poets. Yes. But not to the extent uh, that people aren't uh, familiar with uh, Watts' prophets. And, and that's, I mean, that's, that's got to that gotta sting a little, you know what I mean? Because, like, y'all put the work in. You know, y'all came out in 1967. And the last poets came out in '68, right? Mm -hmm. About okay. the same time, we were both in workshops. Right. They were, we okay. were in uh, Bud Schulberg's workshop called the Watts Writers Workshop, and they were in another workshop in New York. We didn't know each other. We had barely heard each other. We weren't copying each other. Right. It was just something that was organic. It just grew up in the black community. So how do you have that? How do you have? <coughs> how do you have no? Uh, poetry to that extent and then all of a sudden you have two like these these two like forces from the east coast and the west coast are in the studios around the same time they don't know each other but they're creating this new uh wave of music that's about to basically uh take over yes well you know like i said man we didn't have no area of expression that's why we exploded in Watts. That's why mm -hmm. they exploded in Harlem and Detroit. We didn't have no way to tell people what was happening to us. Mm -hmm. And that's what the, the Watts prophets and the last poets, we became the voice of the people, mm -hmm. basically the people from the ghettos of America. Because my poetry, I didn't learn my poetry from uh, in school or from any type of intellectuals. My poetry was basically uh, taken from the gambling house. The first poem I ever heard and learned was The Signified Monkey. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, in the gambling house, dice be nice, let me have two till Lou get through. You know, the, the, the little sayings right. that be going on around the gambling table. Well, that's the first poetry that we heard, including the last poets, Jalal, the most rhyming poet in the world. Mm -hmm. That's where he came from. Basically, toast, toasting like, you know what I mean? Right. And so that's really where we came from. You're checking out Willie D Live.